Now I have these six batteries powering my entire house. My 20 solar panels are bringing in 5,000 watts of power. It's running everything in the house 24 seven. This system runs the air conditioner, the refrigerator, and all the lights, the TV, internet, and even the microwave. There's absolutely no electricity that runs to this property. This property is totally off the grid, but yet we can live like a normal family. This is something you could do yourself, whether it be an off-grid property, a deer camp, or just a backup system for your house. The equipment to build something like this nowadays is easily accessible. It's not gonna be as hard as you think. When I get up in the morning and check the four batteries, they're always around 25% discharged. That means they're only using about a quarter of their power throughout the night. But today we're gonna make the battery bank stronger by adding two more of the Batcher Server Rack batteries. I honestly chose these batteries because of the price, how easy they were to hook up, and I love the LCD screens that are on here. The Batcher batteries are one of the cheapest batteries on the market. On top of that, the battery has Bluetooth, so you can view all this information on your phone. You're gonna get state of charge, battery voltages, temperatures, and a few other things. Right now you can get these batteries under $900. I know a lot of people are looking for a great deal on the server rack batteries because they're so expensive. So this might be a choice that you'd like to take a look at. Most of these server rack batteries nowadays are $1,200 to $1,400. So I started out with two of these batteries and they did well. And then I added two more to make it a total of four for the whole system. Well, if any of you guys ever tinker with solar or you install it, then you know what you have is never enough. It seems like we always continue to build it bigger and stronger. So we're going to bring the total of this system up to 30 kilowatt hours. That's going to help us when we have multiple cloudy days. That way we can continue to run the air conditioner and everything else in the house. I'm even thinking about going with an instant electric hot water heater. I may just do away with all the propane stuff I have being that I have so much power here. Okay, let's go ahead and get these two batteries installed and then we'll talk about the rest of the system and how well it works. Okay, we finished up on the four cables here and if you'll take notice, all four cables are the exact same size. Also, if you'll take notice, all four cables are the exact same size of every cable here. I've said this many times, the reason we do that is to keep an even charge on the batteries. As long as the positives and the negatives on every battery is the exact same length, you're not gonna have any imbalance problems. All right, let's go ahead and get these two other batteries wired into the system. All right guys, that's it. Everything is hooked up. We're ready to turn it on and see how it works. First thing we're gonna do is just turn all the batteries on. Go ahead and check the voltages on everything. Make sure everything is okay. There it is, everything is sitting at 100%. So that's perfect. The battery's gonna start off even and uh, they should charge even. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, flip on the power to the inverters. We'll give it a minute. We'll let the power come up to power up the house here. And after we get that done, we'll turn on the solar panels down here. All right, still no voltage yet to the house. We're waiting to see 120 on these. Okay, this one just kicked in, 120 and 120. All right, so we're running the 120 volts to the house. Now we can go ahead and kick the solar panels on. Go ahead and check. There's, the sun is behind the clouds right now, so we'll just kind of see what we have coming in, if anything. Doesn't look like a whole lot. Yeah, about 245 watts there and about 300 watts there. So, eh, 550 watts, something like that. But like I said, there's no sun out right now, so it's all behind the clouds. And Plus our batteries are topped off. They're all sitting at 100%, so 
This is all it's calling for probably to run the house right now. I really like my system here. I love the setup. I love having this type of power and I love the EG4 inverters. The EG4 inverters have done a really good job. I've never had any of them fail that I've installed. And the batteries here are compatible with the EG4 equipment. When these Vatcher batteries are on sale, they're somewhere around $800 a piece. Other than that, they normally run under 900 bucks. If you're trying to build a powerful battery bank, this is actually a great choice. That's kind of weird, uh, 1600 watts here, but only 600 here. So we must have some shading on the panels. Let's go check it out. One set of the panels must be partially shaded or something. Yep, that's what it is. So take a look at that. You have three panels down on the end that are partially shaded. And then these panels right here, they, they have full power going to them. But what's amazing here is uh, these are running about 1600 watts right now. And these panels right here are running 600 watts. So just because those panels are shaded right there, it's actually taking 1,000 watts away from that roll of panels. The reason that it does that is because they're actually ran in series, one into the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. If they were actually ran in parallel, they would lose a lot less wattage whenever you had a panel that was shaded. But then you have the downfalls of wiring everything in parallel. Number one, the amps are too high. Number two, the wiring is going to cost you a lot more. And number three, a lot of these inverters won't handle that type of amperage. A lot of these all-in-one inverters now are taking high voltage and low amps. So yeah, what a great system here. I love not having to worry about power. I feel like I'm doing just as good as anyone that's connected to the grid. You know, that little solar addiction that we have where you just keep building and building and building. Well, the only thing is now I can't add any more batteries to this system because there's no more room. Also, the bus bars are just about filled up and they won't really take any more power. These bus bars are rated for 600 amps and you're capable of pulling 100 amps out of each battery if needed. So that pretty much maxes out the bus bars. I haven't hooked the generator into this system in almost a year. That tells you how good it's been working. You know, when I first built this system, I only had one of these inverters and two of these batteries. It ran the house just fine, but at nighttime I had to turn the generator on for the air conditioner. So one more thing, this shed right here is actually in the shade. If you'll look up here, I've got a tree here that's right above it that shades it pretty nice. But the problem is, even though it's in the shade, when I shut these doors right here, the heat that's produced off of all these batteries charging and these two inverters charging the batteries is pretty intense. I'll open up the door sometimes and the heat just comes rushing out. So I'm trying to figure out a good ventilation system to put up in here. I probably want to put a vent here and a vent over here. But the thing about it is I want to make sure that there's no way water can get in here when we have rain. Right now this thing does really well when it's raining and no water seems to get inside. I'm afraid if I go retrofitting it here and putting some vents in here that I might have a leak. And I think the worst thing I could do is have water leak down on my batteries here or even hit the inverters. On another note, in the winter time, it actually does good because it keeps the batteries and the inverter and everything warm inside there whenever it's really cold outside. So yeah, let's go check out the house and make sure everything's running right inside the house. So yeah, we're gonna pull pretty hard on everything. We'll go ahead and uh, leave the air conditioner on all night. We're gonna leave this fan on all night. We'll go ahead and plug this ice maker in right here. And of course we got our refrigerator freezer here. We'll let it run and uh, yeah, we'll see what the batteries are in the morning. All right, guys, it's the next morning. We're going to walk out here to the shed, see what the batteries are saying. I uh, had the air conditioner running all night. It's still running. The uh, fan was running all night, the ice maker, um, the refrigerator. And I had the two outside lights on most of the night until I got up about 3 in the morning and I uh, went to the bathroom and I turned those lights out. So, um, yeah, so basically we ran everything just about all night long. So, uh Let's see where the batteries are at. All right, they look a little lower than I expected for six batteries here, but uh, looks like around 54 to 56 percent. See, we have 52 there, 54, 56, 54, 54, and 51. Yes, they're not completely uh, leveled out either. So today, when the sun comes out, uh, they'll charge up and it'll start leveling these things out where they all get the. Uh, the same state of charge here now you have to think here uh it's 8 30 in the morning we just went about 15 hours with no sun so uh for the batteries to be only down to you know just below 60 percent uh well some of them some of them are closer to 50 but i mean that's awesome that means i could go another full 16 hours or so if we had a total blackout you know um and continue to run all the equipment that i ran you know, I didn't have to leave the TV on all night. I didn't have to leave the lights on all night. You know, uh, 
I didn't have to have the ice maker running all night. And I could have put the air conditioner on economy mode where it kicked in and out. So yeah, this kind of gives you an idea of what type of battery bank to buy. But don't forget, it also depends on how many panels you have. So yeah, we're only getting about 500 watts. And yeah, there's a lot of clouds. But when the sun gets over the top of us here, even despite the clouds that are here, I know that I'm still going to be pulling in around 2,000 watts with the clouds. So yeah, it just kind of shows you and gives you an idea of the kind of power that you can pull from six batteries. So yeah, if you're interested in a system like this, let's go over the prices so you can see what it might cost you. The 20 solar panels here, they're 335 watts and they cost me around $55 each. And like I was telling you about the Vatcher batteries, they're gonna cost you just over $800 a piece. Then we have the EG4 inverter here. You can buy this inverter for $699 and it will power up about 3000 watts worth of appliances in your house. Like I said, I went with two EG4 inverters so I could double my power. But the thing about it was I'm just adding to the system that I bought before or I would have bought a single 6000 watt inverter when I started. But now that I've started with these, if I even needed more power i think i would just go with one more you can stack these things up parallel like i've done here now when you buy these inverters they do come with this dc breaker but you'll have to buy some of these t-class fuses here and they're going to run you about $30 a piece. You'll need some breakers for the uh, solar panels where the power comes in from the solar panels. On some inverters, they have built-in breakers. But on this particular one here by EG4, it does not have the built-in breaker. So yeah, then you're looking at $70 for these bus bars right here. We can connect all the wiring together that goes to the inverters. And I think I paid $30 for this combination box where I could just tie everything in here parallel together. And you won't need that if you're only getting one inverter. And this system is really simple to hook up. As long as you can read the instruction book, on the EG4 inverter, you'll be fine. The batteries here are no brainer, positive to negative, go into the positive to the negative on the bus bar. A lot of people ask about my Rubbermaid shed here, and it was about 275 bucks or 279 at Home Depot. So it's a pretty good option, like I said, except the fact that uh, trying to ventilate it, you know, it needs to be ventilated for sure. There's just not enough space in there for it to, you know, dissipate all that heat. So you'll definitely have to, uh, you know put some type of ventilation in it for the summertime a lot of people are looking at solar racks and the pricing of it and a lot of times they cost more than the solar panels in my case here i just used old fence post and i concreted them into the ground i then took the top rail or some of the other Woo! i didn't know there's a wasp nest back there uh anyway uh they're usually not underneath the solar panels it gets too hot i then used the fence post and used it as the top rail all the way across here it was pretty simple. I just used self-tapping screws and screwed it all together. And hey man, uh, I've seen it hold up to 80, 90 mile an hour winds. And these are off grid applications here. You know, if you have to get your system permitted or something like that, it's definitely gonna require, you know, something different than what I did here. All right guys, so the sun finally decided to come out here. Where is it at? Right there, bright as heck. Uh, we're gonna check the batteries. See, we're already up to 62%. Let me see what the rest of them say. Yeah, 65, 63, 61, 60. Wow, guys, I'm seeing around 3,000 watts a piece on each inverter here, which tells me that my panels are pushing around 6,000 watts total. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there with you. If you'd like to build a system like this, I'll leave the links in the description of the video for the batteries, the solar panels, the inverters. I'll also leave links to the T-Class fuses and some of the wiring that I used and, and just some of the accessories. That way you can click on them and see what the total cost is going to be.